let me say welcome everyone to our Future of Work Virtual Roundtable Series. As a reminder, I am Jamie Thomason, a simulation specialist and learning partner here at Mersion, joined by my VP of Growth and Identity, Ms. Christina Yu, and our superstar partner, Angela Nino from Empathic Workplace. At this time, while we're getting everybody on board and getting you used to using that chat function, I would just like to recognize the fact that we're all coming from very different places today. We've come on board because we're talking about navigating that new norm, working from home, managing our teams, our, our leaders, our direct reports, our fellow teammates, having to deal with that situation in a virtual world and how we're navigating that. We're happy you're here to have that conversation with us because we are coming from a different place. I would love if you get used to using that chat by just going ahead and popping in right now as we're doing our introductions, one to maybe a three word phrase of what you're thinking, how you're feeling today, so we can just kind of take a temperature of the group. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna turn things over to Christina to give a brief introduction of immersion. At that point, we'll have our conversation with Angela let you see an actual immersion simulation of how we can use that to practice these conversations and then have plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. So Christina, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jamie. Welcome everyone to our Future of Work virtual roundtable series. For those of you who aren't familiar with Mersion, we are a VR for emotional intelligence company. So what that means is that we use simulations to power experiential learning for essential workplace skills like leadership, communication, and empathy. So we're essentially a virtual environment for practicing difficult conversations, whether that's motivating an underperforming team, de-escalating inter-office conflict, or adapting different work styles to maximize team performance. The idea behind the technology is that we're using the power of VR, the power of presence and plausibility, not just to create a thrilling sense of immersion, but to actually improve human interaction. Simulations replicate the qualities of a real experience for learners, achieving an ideal blend of safety and danger. So they're safe enough so that learners feel like they can make mistakes, can try new things, can find their voice, and really stretch their capabilities on the spot. And they're also dangerous enough to recreate the stress of a real encounter so that learners emerge from simulations inoculated for the stress of the moment and prepared to handle those challenging conversations in real life. This quote summarizes it well, the brain and the body get a very real experience of practice that actually activates the same neural pathway required to turn a routine into habit. So today uh, uh, we have with us Angela Nino, who's a CFI and, and the founder um, and CEO of Empathic Workplace. And we'll talk about how to navigate the new norm and working and leading in a virtual world. Oh, I'll turn it over to Angela. Thank you, Christina. Great. Thanks, Christina. I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen so that all focus is on Angela. <laughs> I love that. Um, thank you so much, Christina, and thank you so much, Jamie. I love working with Mersion. Um, so a little bit about me and how I ended up even working with Mersion is that I was uh, a customer before we were like teammates, and Mersion was my secret weapon for how to practice empathy. It was my place for authentic rehearsal and my place to practice imperfection because as the CEO of a company called Empathic Workplace, I need to be good at this. Like not just good at this, I need to be amazing at empathy and I need to be amazing at difficult conversations. And so for me, I, I needed a place that I could go that wasn't my business partners and wasn't my clients. I mean, can you imagine getting a call from one of your you know, client partners and being like, hey, can I uh, work out a difficult conversation on you that I need to have with a different client? So immersion has been my, my space for that. And I, at one point I was asked um, to give a talk. I was the backup speaker for Disrupt HR event, um, Disrupt Madison, or I'm sorry, Disrupt Milwaukee, and they asked if I could talk about technology, and I was like, I don't even use Snapchat, so I don't know how I can talk about technology, so I called my, my friends at Mersion, and I said, um, I need help. I am supposed to talk about technology, and I, you know, you guys have been on Zoom calls with me. Like, I'm not allowed to drive anything here today, you guys, just so you know. I'm not answering. We're not sharing my screen. I don't. I can only look at the chat box. That's about as far as I can go. 
because I technology, I have gotten better though, I will say with Zoom um, since my first Zoom call with Mersion. And you know, I asked, can I can I talk about can I talk about my experience with virtual reality and how that's helped me? So Mersion said yes. And uh, we have an amazing disrupt talk. If you guys would like to check out that Vimeo, we can um, drop a, a link in the in the window. Um, and so the thing that I really want to talk to you guys um, about today is navigating the new norm. And you know, it's hard to even say that what we are going through is is normal. This is this is really difficult. Uh, so the first the first slide that I have for you guys, um, I'll say hi to all our peeps. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we're navigating the new norm. Um, and the, the first thing is really checking in before we get it, before we get to work. And this started because I want to say the first, um, my, my business partners and I use Skype as our just like general messenger. And, you know, it was our first Skype call since we were all in lockdown, not lockdown, just since the stay at home order, it feels like lockdown. Um, since the stay at home order was put out in Illinois, and I was so excited to tell my team about our newest advisory board member. So I was like jumping into this. And my one business partner, Lisa said, she's like, can you just like time out for a second? Like, I'm excited to get to work. She's like, Angela, the last time I talked to you, um, my, my, uh, my, my very good friend and um, my, my roommate passed away. Um, my landlord closed down my building. And then, um, so I have also moved during the coronavirus thing and um, she said, you know, this is what was going on the last time I talked to you, you know, Rick just got back from Aspen, you know, can we just check in with where one another is at? And I, I had to pause for a second because she was right. I did need to check in about what was happening with my mental health, which is the reason that Jamie asked that, you know, that's something that, you know, even she and I, as we, you know, talk outside of this, um, we will absolutely share the slide deck um, after. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry, I'm answering the chat as I'm talking to you guys. So if that's annoying, feel free to put in the chat, that's annoying. Um, what I would like you guys to put into the chat, and if you're not sure how to use the chat, there's a little button down the bottom. If you hover over, there's like the mute, the stop video, participants, Q&A, chat. If you hit that little chat button, you'll see um, Zoom webinar chat. And I'm really curious to, you know, to check in with you guys. And this is the, this is the second call that I've done with Mersion, like the second round table and checking in with everyone has been really helpful for me to gauge where everyone's at. And it, as a presenter really helps me to feel connected to the group. Uh, I know there's a, a bunch of us on here is about 28 people. If you guys would drop in, um, you know, as Jamie had asked earlier, I know a lot more people have joined since uh, she asked. If we could just drop in a couple of words about how we are doing today. Um, I know some of us might be feeling lonely. I know I put in that I was feeling a little stir crazy. Uh, you know, I did see, I saw disoriented, uh, a little bit disconnected. I'm excited one of you is looking forward to, Patricia's looking forward to another good session. Um, so I'm curious to know how, how you guys are feeling. Low energy, Andrea, yeah, I feel... I feel low energy, exhausted, doing more with less as we go through a reorg. Krista, I feel that. Oh, I feel that. Agitated, Chantel. Yeah, I get that too. I feel like I go through all of these emotions that you guys have typed in so far. There's like a cycle of them that I go through. And I think that's why it's important to, to check in on where we're at with people before we start calls so that we know what we're walking into. Um, and know where people are at. And I, I kind of like the idea of normalizing, checking in on mental health. I hope this is one of those things, uncertainty. Oh, Juan, I feel that deeply, a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, I hope this is one of those things that we continue to practice as we, you know, move forward. Um, you know, I, I've heard things about, you know, I don't want to go back to the way things were. I want to adjust the way things were. I hope that checking in on mental health becomes one of those things that is the new normal. Um, that's my, 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 personal, my personal thing. Oh, thank you, Chantel. So um, I will talk to the chat box. It helps me feel more connected with you guys. Um, you know, I, this is a round table and I feel a lot less alone here in this, in this round table when you guys are, are with me. Um, Colette said, going through the transition, adjusting. Yeah. Well, that brings me to our next slide. And please yeah. continue. And I was just going to say, 
Kira, yeah. you mentioned something about good this week, or at least for today. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I know you're going to talk on that of just, you know, eating yeah. the elephant one bite at a time, taking yeah. it for today. And I love the, the positive of, hey, I'm acknowledging that I might not be as great tomorrow or I wasn't yesterday, but I'm in a yeah. good place today. So yes, let's, there, let's focus there was, on that. So I also, one of the things, okay, so first I want to talk about letting go of perfection. And then I will get into what I am doing to maintain some of my stir craziness. Um, I've been sewing masks. I am not a seamstress, to be clear. This is not something that I do regularly. And I've all of a sudden, pay, like, you know, decided to transition to this. Um, I had to watch a lot of YouTube videos, but I'm figuring it out. So the first thing is letting go of perfection. Um, this is a really hard thing for me to do. I like things to be, you know, I was a 911 dispatcher. It was my first job out of college. You know, I was an athlete. I, I taught interview and interrogation techniques for a while. So like messing up was an issue for me. You know, it was at a lot of times a matter of life or death. And I have to let go of perfection when it comes to things like sending an email. If I transition all of these perfectionism issues into every other area of my life and could be crippling, you know, and one of the things I have to do is like, I have to let go of perfection when it comes to, I don't know what my internet's going to do today. You know, some days my internet is like, you know what, I'm here for you. And other days my internet's like, oh, did you want to watch Tiger King? Too bad. Go sew a mask. That's, that's how I feel like the internet and I are, are, are doing today. Um, so let go of perfection in all of this. You know, we're not going to be perfect, you know, parents teaching our children, um, whatever core math is, I've always carried the one. Uh, we're not going to be perfect at eating. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I tried to help with fourth grade homework. It, I, I gotta tell you, that was a, that was a humbling experience. Um, I, you know, I don't, how many, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Um, I, I don't know what it is about, about, you know, I, I balance, I've run a company, you know, and I can't do fourth grade math homework, which I'm sure it wasn't good to tell the kids, see, you're not going to need this. I can't do it. You're not going to need it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm embracing the imperfection there. So let go of that. We can, we can be doing the best we can and not be perfect. And that has to be okay. You know, we are, we are, you know, a lot of us are talking about like working from home. This isn't really working from home. We are working in our homes in a crisis. This is a crisis and we are trying to function in our homes with new office mates that include like pets. Uh, Winslow might come over and say hi soon. I don't know. Um, he's currently in another room, but sometimes he works his way out. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a new way of living that is not normal. So let go of perfection, give yourselves a break. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is, uh, setting boundaries and honoring boundaries. Now, a lot of us in our, our you know, we are in our homes. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you. So, you know, we are in our homes and I don't know how many of you guys have taken Zoom calls from your bed and tried really hard to make it look like you weren't sitting in your bed. Um, and I'm sitting in my bed because one of the people that I live with is trying to teach a class in the living room and the other one is trying to take a class from her bedroom and another one is trying to like all the different things that are happening and they've continued to have to readjust. So, you know, the people that, you know, we live with also have the same needs. I've had many Zoom calls moved back because someone's kid needed the computer because they had to Zoom call with their teachers. So it is okay to set boundaries and to say like, I'm not available for video today. I thought I was going to be, I am not. Now I understand wanting to check in on our team. You know, we want to make sure that we're still practicing hygiene and we want to make sure that, you know, our, our teammates are doing okay and that our, our the people that we're with are doing okay because it, one of the ways that we can check in is to actually see them. Um, but if someone is, is, at, is asking not for video today, let's honor that. And it's okay to set that boundary. You know, how many of you would invite your coworkers into your bedroom in any other situation? So let's keep that in mind as we, right, as we're leading through this yeah, to remember and, that. Yeah. I was Go just going to say, Alana mentioned, you know, she's got four, four people working from home. So, you know, just like you were saying, you're going to, you're going to have to rotate and take space. And I right. think, uh, I, I know this really was in reference, I think to the previous slide, but it, it 
ties in with honoring boundaries, I believe. And it might be something you circle back to, but uh, we did have an anonymous question of what kind of questions do you use to check on mental health without being too personal? Mm -hmm. So I would, I would start the question with, I, so this is an interrogation technique, um, which is, it's, it's almost like taking the sting out of a question by, by rationalizing before we ask the question. So saying something like, I know that these are really challenging times and I know that I am, you know, your boss or direct supervisor or whatever. So it might be weird for, you know, you to want to tell me this, but I really just want to check in and see how you're doing today. Um, yeah, oh, so I saw Elena talk about um, putting up a virtual background. Uh, I will say this, putting up the virtual background does not block out the humans that are walking behind you. Totally was on a Zoom call and watched a naked person walk behind someone. And I was like, why did I not record this? I could have been a YouTube star. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't post like stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you can also put up a, a virtual background, as uh, Elena said. Um, just remember that it's like a heat-sensitive thing almost. I don't know what it is. They can find bodies and they can see naked bodies. I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, so so honor, honor boundaries, set boundaries. And if we want to check in on someone, it's okay to just say, I, I, I care how you're doing. You know, and you matter as a human being more than you matter. Yes, I need productivity. Of course, I need productivity. And I also need to know, you know, how you're doing because that helps me to, you know, to like to help you with what's going on. If someone's having a day and, you know, I have, I have someone who's in our improv class on Wednesday nights. I also have a company called the Improv Therapy Group. And one of the therapists texted me that she was going to be late. I, no joke because of a poop emergency she has a two-year-old and a newborn. I asked no more questions. I don't want any more details about that. Like, girl, you can show up late and it's going to be fine. Um, okay, so we're setting and honoring boundaries. The next thing um, that I want to talk about is that we are in this together. There's not, there, there's some comfort in knowing that this is, it's not like we have to explain to someone. So, um, you know, what's happening in Chicago right now is that there's a stay-at-home order because uh, you know, there's this thing called COVID-19 that's happened. Like we all know what's happening. We all know what's going on. Um, and we're all dealing with this. So there is some comfort in knowing that we're in this together. I know that, um, you know, it's, it can be, it can feel lonely when we're going through something and it feels like the rest of the world is moving forward without us. Um, whether it's we're experiencing grief or we're experiencing a setback in our careers, we can feel alone when the rest of the world is going about normally. There is some comfort in knowing that we are all in this together. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is to take time for recalibrating again and again. I don't know about you guys. Um, has everyone gone to the grocery store and learned about five new rules every single week that you broke? Because that has 100% happened to me. Every time I go to the grocery store, there's some new thing that I did wrong that someone has to tell me that I'm doing wrong. And so the grocery store that I'm in um, now has like one way stickers. And the last time I was in the grocery store, a cop was coming at me in the wrong way. Like, what am I supposed to say? Like, get out of my aisle? Like, and I have a mask on, so we can't tell if I'm smiling or not. So I'm like over there waving like Forrest Gump. And I'm like, this is, this is not what I am used to. So we have to remember to, I went the way to, yeah, Elena said that she um, went all the way down the aisle. It's, we're figuring it out. We are figuring it out. And we are, and knowing that we're going to continue to recalibrate. We are, this is going to, it's not like, this is just going to be like a check. We figured it out. You know, I'm learning new stuff about Zoom every day. I am, I'm, I'm learning to navigate this differently every day and embracing that change has been something that, you know, this has been something that I think that I have not practiced this regularly in a really long time. I think I really like it when I'm like, okay, I figured it out, done. We're just gonna do it like this forever. And like, that's just never going to happen. That's never going to happen. And, and this is, um, I have only had deliveries for weeks. Jamie says, this is a whole crazy system of gloves and spray and washing my dishes. Yeah. My, um, I, it, I feel like all I do is clean my kitchen and it, that's because that is all I'm doing is cleaning my kitchen. 
I, I make food, I clean those dishes. I make more food, I clean those dishes. I, it is very weird for me to spend that much time in my kitchen. So remember- I meant to say washing to my groceries. <laughs> 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 like that new process of washing everything that comes into the house. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I remember my grandmother talked about the depression until the day she died uh, a couple years ago. And this is, this is our depression. We're going to, the things that we are doing now, um, the things that we're experiencing now, I think that, you know, we're going to have to explain to our kids, why are we wiping down the grocery bags um, every single time? And someone's going to be like, grandma went through COVID, just let her go. Just let her go. Let her wash her, <laughs> like, let her just wash her bags. It's fine. Uh, so, so keep, and I, keep, Marie, yeah, sometimes that, that recalibrating is recalibrating for the good. Marie said, yes. reminding ourselves of the positive for yes. her spending time with her son home from college and cooking and baking like they used to when, when he was little. And that brings us to our next slide, practicing gratitude. So practicing gratitude is a practice that we do before every improv call. Uh, we talk about five things that we're grateful for to get ourselves into a mindset of, of gratitude. And when I start to get frustrated about things, I move to gratitude. What are five things I'm grateful for? And don't get me wrong. There's sometimes I'm like, no, screw this. I'm going to be mad. Um, and that doesn't help. Getting in touch with my anger doesn't always help. And remembering to be grateful for this time. You know, I, I would not be sewing right now. I'm legit sewing. I, I have watched Matt. I have watched YouTube tutorials on how to like fix sewing machines on how to do like surgical patterns. Um, and I'm so grateful for this because it reminds me of time that I spent with my grandmother. She's the one who taught me how to sew when I've reconnected with my mom, my mom FaceTimed me because I messed something up and I needed to know how to fix it. Um, and just, you know, reconnecting with people on things that are very nostalgic for me. Um, I always thought this was cheesy before I did it last night. It does. It instantly changes our mindset. And so practice gratitude and protect our mental health. Uh, I know that I personally, um, I was in therapy about once every uh, two, three, once a month, three weeks, once a month. Um, as soon as all of this happened, I asked my therapist if we could check in weekly. And it's really just a, I'm okay, I'm doing great. And I wanna make sure that I don't derail myself at this time. So I, I mean, I even had therapy this morning. So I'm checking in with my therapist once a week. And I also am checking in with a dietitian once a week right now um, so that I can, I can keep uh, a check on things that are important to me that I know if I start to derail with like food, that's not a good space for me to go. If I start to derail mental health wise, that's not a good place for me to go. And I gotta tell you, I don't really have time to try to, to rebound. Um, I check in with, <laughs> Elena said, I check in with people that I never liked. All right, Elena's winning. Um, I'm not checking in on them yet. I haven't checked in on them. Not yet. I'm sorry not that yet. just brought me such joy because I, it's, it, what a beautiful practice. I love that. Yeah. All right, Ebony asked, um, is there gonna be a link for the recording? Jamie will send out a link for the recording, yes. Hi, yeah. not as dining room is. So close, yes, working close to the kitchen. I gotta tell you, I have my sewing set up right next to the kitchen. So when I wander in the kitchen, I'm like, what can I put Nutella on today? I'm like, or maybe I could sew something. So it's really helping me stay busy with my hands. Uh, so the other thing is to help people with virtual etiquette and expectations. At this point, I'm sure we have all seen the video of the Zoom call where the girl, no joke, goes to the bathroom. We all see her on the toilet help one another out with that. And as funny as it is, um, yes, it's as funny as that is. Um, don't blow, don't, don't put someone out on YouTube. Am I glad that that got shared with me? Of course I am. Did I share it with other people? Absolutely. Um, and you know, I, I almost want to like send her some recommendations for a therapist to go through this. Can you, and she's a social worker. Can you imagine like seeing your therapist go to the bathroom? Like, what's that next call like? So help one another with, with virtual etiquette and expectations. In fact, the Im I've been doing a lot of improv online, which who would have thought doing Zoom improv would be um, anything that's, you know, it, it's, it, it's, not, it's not easy and we're making it work. 
Um, and one of the things that we talked about the week one is games that help us to show people what to do. Like when I started this call, I said, you know, in the chat box, if you look down below, you hover your mouse, you will see the different icons, click the chat box so that if Zoom is not something that people are familiar with, that we can help them. The first Zoom call I ever did, no joke, was with Mersham. Um, I was in a Starbucks. I didn't really know how Zoom worked, but I was 10 minutes early. And so there was no one on the call. So I, I opened up another window and started eating grapes and eggs and carrots. And then I closed the window and I see someone like waving their hands, like, please tell me you can see and hear me now. And I was like mortified. I was like, okay, well, I guess we're just going to jump right into familiarity because you just watched me eat for like, I don't even know how many minutes. So um, that was, yeah, that was my first experience with Zoom. That was with Mersion, you guys. Yep, you guys have been with me since the beginning. So helping mm -hmm. others with etiquette. If someone is embarrassing themselves on Zoom, when does it make sense to interrupt immediately? I'm going to say um, it depends on what they are doing. So for example, um, if someone if someone is, is getting undressed, you're seeing someone naked, um, I would say jump in immediately. Um, I was on a call yesterday where someone was talking and they were on mute and didn't realize they were on mute. I just unmuted myself really quick and I was like, hey, just so you know, you accidentally muted yourself and I, un and I, I put myself back. Um, I know that it can be weird to, uh, we can see ourselves. We can see ourselves. And so I know some people are saying that um, they don't want to see themselves on video. It, it depends, you know, or, I don't know how, I kind of like to monitor myself, um, but I also don't want to be like, you know, like, like, like fixing my hair. I've definitely talked to people that pose for me um, while they're talking to me, like they're that self-conscious about it. Oh yeah, so someone just typed in singing happy birthday was impossible. Um, you know, there's some improv games that we play where we all say something at the same time. It is not easy. So we've had to, we've had to eliminate some of, of those games. Um, it's, it's just the way that the audio works and you know, it's, it, it's awkward. Um, the zoom thing had me psyched though. I feel like you're talking to yourself in the beginning, right? We have definitely gotten used to this. So, um, the, you know, being able to, I want to, I just kind of want to scroll up a second, make sure I answered all these questions. Cause I know the last question that I answered was, you know, how much, how soon do we check in with one another? Yeah. I'm, I'm keeping tabs over here for you. Okay. I've seen calls where people are inadvertently embarrassing themselves, but everyone is too respectful to speak up. So it becomes the elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, so we can send people private messages. I don't know if you guys know how to do that, but when you look in the chat, you can send a message to someone or to everyone. So you can send a private message. If you guys aren't sure how to do that, let me know. I'll stay on after this call because I mean, I'm literally saying help people with virtual etiquette and expectations. So I am, I am here for you for that. And if someone's doing something embarrassing, um, if someone, if you think it's embarrassing enough that someone's taking a video of it, uh, I would let them know if that's the line in the sand. Um, if someone's doing something like, you know, like, I don't know, maybe biting their nails. Um, I scratch my nose a lot when I'm nervous or sweaty. So, um, you know, that's just something that I, that I do that someone might consider embarrassing. Um, but I, I would want someone to tell me so if, if it's, if it's embarrassing, I would let, I would let them know. Um, and some people just do distracting things. Like I was on a meeting yesterday and someone was on their treadmill while they were at the meeting, but they had a background up. They had the virtual background up, but it looked like he was like, it looked like he was like trying to like, like wrap to the meeting. This was like head was bouncing back and forth. And like, that was so distracting. It was distracting. So I just put up someone else's, I put it on speaker view instead of watching dude run in his virtual like background. Um, so the, the next thing I want to talk about is practicing difficult conversations. And this is where Mersion comes in for me. Mersion is the place where I practice these difficult conversations. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but what's amazing to me is that I get a place to practice imperfection. It's not like I can hurt the avatar's feelings. Um, it's a place for me to have an authentic rehearsal with a difficult conversation. And the reason is I'm looking at a cartoon and don't, it, it is not lost on me that to practice reality, I argue with a cartoon, but it's just enough of a smeared reality for me that I take it seriously because I'm talking to a real voice. 
And so we're going to go into a simulation so you guys can see what we're talking about and how I personally would address, yeah, you've been using Mersion for three scenarios. Yeah, Elena, I love Mersion. Um, like I said, it was my secret weapon until I was asked to give a presentation on technology. It was like, help me. So we're going to go into um, a scenario. We've got a, we've got a scenario for you guys um, to, we're going to be talking to Evelyn and Evelyn is generally a very effective employee. She is very dedicated. She's very smart. She's very passionate about her work. And ever since this stay at home order has been in place and she's been working from home, her work is slipping. Now, the desired outcome is to really get an understanding for what is really interesting forward. We know that people are more likely to buy into a plan if they are the ones that come up with the idea and they are the ones that agree with it. So we want to keep in mind that this is without judgment. You know, if we start to judge what she is doing, that's going to be a very disconnecting thing and it's, it's not, it's not going to help us. Um, we want to use open-ended questions and allow Evelyn to do most of the talking and to help her develop um, a sense of control over the situation. You know, I don't know many people who are like, yay, I had a conversation with my boss about my performance. You know, like it was so great. Um, that, that's rarely how that conversation goes. So making sure that she feels cared about in the situation is, is going to be extremely important. Um, so whenever, remember, I'm not allowed to drive. So whenever... We are ready to pop up um, hey. the simulation. Hey. Hi, Angela. What's up? I feel like I know these. I feel like I know you guys, like your cartoons, but I feel like I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? Well, um, I am very, very happy to see you, Angela. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your presentation today. I'm going to pull up that slide one final time, just as a quick review. Yeah. Now you've covered this with everyone, so I won't b belabor the point, but once again, you're going to be practicing a conversation with Evelyn, who is generally effective, smart, dedicated, but she's just having some issues. And to your point, it's just time to help guide her and get to the bottom of that. And so we're just going to let you give it a shot. And then possibly if somebody else wants to try that afterwards, we can let them. But I thought what we would do is this time around, since we have our fabulous guest with us, that instead of doing the guided reflect back re and feedback that I would normally do with you, mm -hmm. we could take it out to the group and see if they have some great observations of what went well or what you might try differently. Yeah, Does I like this. this. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the, I'm really enjoying the, the chat box. I feel very connected to this group. So I'm all about um, continuing to, to include everybody. Great. So to those of you that are watching, feel free to go ahead and place observations in that chat. And we're going to loop back to that once the scenario is over. Here we or go. any advice, any advice as I'm going through it. Wouldn't mind that either. Thank you. Hey, Evelyn. Hi, you Angela. Doing? Oh, um, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Uh, so I know that, um, the last time, you know, you and I talked, you were talking to me about, you know, feeling really overwhelmed and feeling um, like you were really struggling. And, you know, we talked about how your performance was slipping. And I want you to know that I care very much about you as an individual. And I know that this is extremely unlike you um, to be going through all of this. And so I just wanted to, to start by checking in I know you said you're doing okay. Usually when someone says okay or fine, it might be a little bit more than that. So if you could let me know how you're doing and then we can talk about, you know, what you've got on your plate, okay? Um, yeah, you know, I, it's always so great that you check in with me and I appreciate it. You know, I, I'm just, I guess I'm just getting a little antsy and, you know, just, really trying to focus yeah what's the what's the working situation like i mean i know you're working people are calling this working from home this isn't working from home we are working in our homes how's that how's that been um well it it, it it's okay um i 
honestly, I, I had a roommate, but she went home to spend this time with her family. So I'm kind of all alone in the house and mm. it, I get a little stir crazy sometimes, you know, um, I just, I have, I, I guess I just miss the connection with people, you know, um, I, I have friends and family, but I feel like, honestly, I feel like I'm the only one that, that reaches out. Like, even though I am communicating sometimes, it's still, it's frustrating to me that if I have a conversation, I, it sounds terrible. To, I just feel like I'm the only one that makes the effort. And so it just makes me feel lonely, even though we eventually connect. That does sound really difficult. That sounds really difficult. And I think it's really great that you are reaching out to connect. You know, we can't control how other people respond. We can't control what other people do. We can only choose how we respond to the situation. And it sounds like you're taking a lot of initiative to make sure that you're not feeling lonely. And, you know, I have to remember sometimes for myself, I don't know what's going on in someone's world. You know, my sister's got a, a two-year-old and a six-year-old at home. And, you know, I wish I heard from her more. And I also try to remember, she's got a two-year-old and a six-year-old at home and that are home all the time now. So I, I know that her norm is, mm. is disrupted as well. It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I guess yeah. I just feel like, I don't know, I, I don't always want to be the one doing it, but it, you encouraged me last time to, to reach out and make those connections. So I do appreciate that. And, and I, I do think it's helped. Um, but you know, it's still, I, I think in blocking those, that time and really blocking time for myself to work, like we talked about, that was really, mm -hmm. really helpful for me. It's just, man, I can't wait to get out of here. Yeah. You know, I have really tried to, to radically accept the fact that this could be a while and one of the things that, you know, I, that you said was working for you that I know that's worked for me is I shut down at 6 p.m. I am done working at 6 p.m. And that's when I pull out some of my, you know, my coloring books and I'll pull out some of my, you know, I've, I mentioned I've been sewing. Um, so that's when I pull out those things because I need to, it's, you know, at home, it's amazing how clean my house can get when I've got stuff to do. It's amazing how organized a closet can be um, when I've got stuff to do. So mention you know giving myself like the weekends is the time for that as it typically would be and you know i block out this time for meetings and i block out time to eat lunch and i block out time for meetings and then i'm done for the day and you know i i know that you're still struggling with with completing some tasks and i know that this is about the situation and not about your motivation and not about how intelligent you are none of that so it's the other things that we need to manage with you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, and, and thank you. Thank you. It really does make me feel good that, that you understand that, that it's not for, for lack of trying. And, and to that point, I feel like I feel guilty if I go to organize my closet or do something else. If that task isn't done, I feel like I'm obligated to keep working through those late hours or early evenings or over the weekend, because there's just things that need to be done. And how are they going to get done if I don't do them? So I feel like I have to keep working. I get that. I get really, I can get really task oriented sometimes. And I mean, I totally Marie Kondo'd my closet one day and, you know, ignored emails all day because I, everything was already out of my closet and it needed to live. So I had to put everything back in the closet. And so I've, you know, my, the lesson that I took away from that was maybe big projects aren't to happen while I'm drinking my coffee in the morning. Those are meant to happen on the weekends, those big projects. And writing a list of things that I want to do has also helped. So I don't try to do whatever is just right in front of me because I do still need to contribute to the company and I do still need to contribute to our organization as a whole. And the more organized closet did not help me that day. Um, you know, I think you were one of the people that had emailed me that day. And I, you know, I, I told you, I, I apologize that I'm just getting back to you, you know, because I, you know, watched a couple episodes of Marie Kondo on Netflix and decided my closet was the next thing I needed to tackle. 
So what are, well, yeah. maybe I need to do more of that, but uh, I, I guess together we can help find a balance, huh? Yeah. So what are some goals that you have for the week? You know, I know we'll check in next week on Wednesday. Um, what are some goals that you have for the week to help manage, uh, you know, working in a crisis from our homes? I think you brought up an excellent point of, of making that list. Uh, you know, I, I sort of have my to do's of, of what needs to be done when in terms of deadlines, but maybe just that daily to do list uh, would help take it into smaller bites so it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Okay. And are you still working in a separate workstation um, from your, you're still working in that separate space? Okay. All right. How's that been working, having like a workspace and having your personal space? Um, that's definitely been very helpful because then it's, it gives me that, that separation to your point, like you said, so that I don't feel like I'm working and living and eating and breathing and sleeping all in the same space. But I yeah. have set myself up a little, a little work corner and that's my way of going to the office, so to speak. And it helps me block that time off for work. Yeah, I think this is great. And this is great. Um, you know, you can always reach out to me if you have any questions uh, or if there's a situation that you're not sure how you want to handle it. Um, and also, you know, if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed about a project, you can reach out to me as soon as that overwhelmed feeling happens um, instead of when it's, you know, blowing up. You know, it impacts our clients the same. And, you know, that's literally why I'm here is to support you through this process. So make Thank sure you. that- I, I yeah. You know, I just, I feel like I should be so self-sufficient by now and I'm not used to having to reach out for help. And mm -hmm. I, it, that's a really hard thing for me to do, but you have really opened yourself up to make yourself available for that. I just have to get over that um, self, the, of feeling like I'm doing something wrong if that's what I, if I need help. Yeah, we're going to continue to recalibrate throughout this entire process. Um, I can also check in, you know, if I send you a text message and say checking in on how you're doing, would that help instead of sending an email? Because I feel like email is the way that we communicate professionally. But if I check in in the morning and just say, hey, how you doing this morning? Um, will that help to kind of separate that? If I send a text message, I'm checking in on you. If I'm sending an email, I'm checking in on the work. You know, I, I love that. In fact, I, I know that you're, you always put your phone number at the bottom of your email. So I'm going to send you a little text right now with my name so that you have mine right there and, and I've got yours and boom, there we go. Okay, um, great. I, I think that's great. Thank you. All right. And we will figure out, you know, what things worked in the next week and what things didn't work and we can recalibrate again. Great. Thanks so much. Um, I, I really appreciate your time. Have a good day, Angela. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, Evelyn. I got to tell you guys, it is a little nerve-wracking to perform in front of all of you. You did a great job. And like I said, with your permission, instead okay. of doing that feedback just between you and me. Let's open this up to those of you that are attending. Any sort of observations? Let's take a moment to look at the chat and see what people had to say or have to say now. And we'll let you start things off now and just go ahead and share with me what you what you did that you felt good about that you thought went really well with that. Um, you know, I, I, I really appreciate staying present in the moment and you know, I, I didn't have that scripted, um, you know, keeping in mind the, you know, we just talked about the, you know, the 10 things that to keep in mind as we're navigating the new norm. And I felt that come out in this. And it's almost like I've had to establish my values for this new normal. And I thought that those values came out in the conversation. Um, so I really appreciated that. I see that Dawn typed in compassionate and empathetic. Thank you, Dawn. Um, you know, uh, struggling, trying to be professional and also show personal concern. It, it is, it is a hard balance. Um, we could use Google chat to check in. Yeah, I really, um, someone typed in, uh, you know, using, using different, I find that using a different method of communication for personal stuff can be helpful. Um, you know, uh, the, 
when I want to check in for work wise, I mentioned, you know, my business, we use Skype, but when I want to check in on, you know, my, one of my business partners just found out that um, someone at her dad's nursing home tested positive for COVID. That's a text message. I send a, I send a text about things like that, or, you know, I'll call about things like that. Um, is there anyone? I think that, would... that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. As I'm looking at the time and I want to make sure that I, I give people the opportunity if they want to, um, you know, try to have a conversation with Evelyn as well, that they, they have that opportunity. Chantel, thank Absolutely. you. I like yeah, that I it wasn't. I'm going to step away and let okay. uh, you and Jamie and Christina chat with everyone. And I'm okay. right here if you need me. Okay, great. Um, you know, Chantel typed, she liked that it wasn't an interrogation. There was an equal amount of questioning at sharing personal experiences. That is something that I have found as a leader to be the most impactful thing is to share what my struggles have been and how I have overcome them. So, you know, that is a true story that I totally emptied my entire closet, ignored emails all day and had to make apologies to the people that had sent me emails because I thought that taking everything out of my closet was going to be a real great idea on like a Wednesday. And it turns out that was like a terrible idea. And being able to share that, like, I don't have this all figured out either. I am not a master at working from home that I've had to, you know, recalibrate, you know, where I'm doing things and had to set boundaries with, I'm not available for a video chat right now. You know, I'm, I'm sharing this because these are things that I've gone through and I find that that really helps. Um, yeah. to Absolutely. Demonstrate. I was just going to share too. And I loved the offering of the text for our personal check-in and I can share that Christina and I have been hosting these open houses on Tuesdays, which I know some of you, uh, are familiar with. And one of the things that we focused on a couple weeks ago was helping teams set boundaries in terms of people that maybe were overutilizing those, those texts or getting mixing and matching the, the personal with the professional, trying to add in levity or, or, and make it fun, but, but just setting those boundaries. And I think that was one of the things that we talked about at that point was having that mm -hmm. separation to have one place where that's appropriate so that it keeps that thread and that unity of the work solid and, and keeps that separated. Yeah. So, I have a mm -hmm. lot of therapists in my, um, in my network because of, you know, the improv therapy group and their posts have been amazing on, on all social networks. And one of them posted last week, you know, asking someone if they have the, you know, if they have the emotional capacity or mental capacity, I don't know what they said. It was very nice and supportive. Um, but basically, are you available to listen to me vent right now? Are you available for this? <laughs> not everyone, sometimes I am available and sometimes I just took everything out of my closet. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> asking people if they're available and being okay saying I'm not available and recommending contacting someone else. It's a really hard thing to do. You know, someone calls and they're like, I'm going through this. And like, I remember that happened to me once someone called and they're like, this is happening in my life. And I was about to walk into a rehearsal for a show. And I was like, I, I need to walk into rehearsal still. And I am sorry that you're going through this. You need to pick up the phone. You need to call another one of your friends. Um, it's, you know, boundaries are loving. Boundaries, it, it's okay. It can, it can feel really hard sometimes, um, but we respect the people that do that. Yeah, definitely. So we, do, we want to give people a chance um, if they want to take a turn through the simulation and um, experience the technology. Uh, and I'll, while I give people a moment to work up their courage to volunteer, we are giving away a gift card for whoever would like to step up and um, take a whirl. I'll uh, address some of the questions I'm getting through private chat about how exactly immersion works. Um, so generally speaking, it, it, it the it's a blend of artificial intelligence and live human interaction. So what that means is that the visuals are controlled by AI, which reduces the cognitive load, which is a fancy way of saying just frees up the live human operator behind the scenes to parachute into different um, different characters and different environments at ease. So we use the avatars not only to create a sense of safety and anonymity for the learner, um, but also to give the simulations this incredible scalability. So the simulation specialist can parachute into those different avatars uh, to, to give the learner 
maximum practice with different personality types and different um, profiles, different personas. And then we can mix and match the avatars, environments, and scenarios to really isolate and target um, learning practice. And altogether, what this means is that we can deliver over 10,000 high impact simulations a week. Um, so the goal is if, if, if we think about how long it takes to master a specific soft skill learning objective, and in this case, it was managing uh, the stress responses of, of others, you know, these are high stakes skills. You know, so much in, in, in your personal and, and your professional life hinges on your ability to have those conversations. It can either make you wildly successful or can destroy friendships and careers. Um, so these skills, they can take us a year or more to master, incurring additional damage. Uh, especially if you think about stress responses. Uh, many of us use video and multiple choice or coaching, things like that. And, and those all have their benefits. Some of those methods tend to be on the more expensive, um, a one-to-one -one side. So the idea with this human in the loop VR simulation is that we're bringing the best together in the human driven and the technology um, driven to create this experiential practice um, so, so that we can see progress um, you know, feel the results, feel our relationships with others, improve in real time, which encourages us to deepen our efforts in these areas and really make emotional intelligence, self-awareness a part of everything that we do. So, yeah. So I see a right. question from Sharon about yep. um, how customizable are the responses. And I know one of the things that we do is to ask a company, what are some of the things that your team is struggling with and what do you guys need to get better at to make sure that we put those, that stimulus in there. So everything is customizable because there's a human being that's on the other side. I don't know if you guys realize that was Jamie talking to me in the Evelyn character. So- And the Bennett. <laughs> and Bennett, I know, and Bennett, but like, it's like your voice was Evelyn. And it's so weird. Like, I feel like I know Bennett and I know that that's not like my brain is like, Bennett, I haven't seen you in so long. But like, I know that Bennett is a cartoon that is your voice and is not real, but my brain doesn't. That's what I like about this as training mm -hmm. technology is that it, it smears reality just enough for me to know that this is an authentic rehearsal and, but it's still a rehearsal. Yeah. yeah. For anyone who has to jump um, right now, uh, here's our contact information for anyone who would like to follow up. If you want to experience a, if you want to experience this simulation or something related to this topic, don't hesitate to contact Angela or Jamie, or simply go to immersion.com and speak with a live chat representative. There's usually someone available during business hours. Um, and then I also want to reserve the last five, 10 minutes for anyone who would like to step up and, and try the simulation. Absolutely. And June was asking about the templates and uh, June or anyone who'd like to connect uh, with with one of our specialists to discuss further, we can always make that happen. Uh, we do have a, a template, as you put, of scenario design that that we have that we have you know, what we've experienced in the past to give us a, a nice overview. But then we really figure out where you or your organization or your clients need to move the needle, what those objectives are that they want to achieve, what those strategies are that you're trying to teach. And then we build backwards from there so that we ensure that that is exactly what your learner is practicing. And then we also implement any sort of verbiage or culture, um, corporate culture within that scenario, within the language as we train our bank of simulation specialists so that it feels truly authentic and fits Exactly, and so it's not a one shop fix all, you know, branching scenario. If I do A, will you do B? It's all very customized and specialized. And one of the things that we find is that most, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, oh, I see that Ida from Venezuela has been hard to understand. I'm sorry that you're going through that. Um, and, you know, a lot oh, we're of- We're grateful you're here. <laughs> So grateful you're here and I can stay on afterwards if that's possible to, to, to you know, answer any individual questions. Um, but we find that a lot of people, you know, every company that has a shared refrigerator has had an issue of someone eating someone else's lunch out of the refrigerator. There are just things that happen um, that are common issues in companies. 
So that's why there are certain templates that are you know, pretty consistent, you know, having to, having to talk to someone about their performance, having to have a conversation with someone um, that is difficult. These, these are the issues that happen in the workplace. Um, and I know I personally am grateful to, to have a place to sneak off and, and practice. Absolutely. Well, we are quickly approaching the top of the hour. So I'm going to go ahead and give everyone just a couple of minutes so that they can get themselves ready for their next call at the top of the hour. And we're going to say thank you so much to everyone. If you would like to stay on, please feel free to. And Angela and Christina and I can stay on and answer any of those questions, be it about the conversation we had today, about empathic workplace, about immersion, you name it, we're here for you. Otherwise, I'll say thank you so much and hopefully we'll see everyone at our next roundtable. Thank you. Yeah, June, I saw that you just